Hello everyone, Rain here from Audio Plugin Deals, and today we are having a look at Soundproc's Complete Guitar Series V2 Bundle. Uh, it's an exciting range of contact instruments with I believe 13 guitars all up, so definitely a lot of exciting sounds to get through here, so let's not waste any more time I suppose. Uh, if you do want to stay up to date with all the deals we have coming at the moment, then don't forget to hit, hit like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications as well so that you can hear every time we drop another one of these deals. Alright, let's get to it. So let's get right into looking at these guitars then. Uh, as a guitarist myself, shocker I know, uh, it is quite an exciting bundle for me here. So within the Complete Series bundle, you get volumes one through four from the Complete Series V2, and you also get the Direct SG guitar. Uh, so yeah, and each of those volumes has, has three guitars within it. So a lot of variety here to look at. We'll get into those sounds. So I've sort of made a demo track, um, and we'll walk through the different layers of it to show you some of these features here. So nice, clean simple interface good size so you can see everything um so you know you have the, the guitar model displayed you have the volume tone and pickup switch um which is nicely sort of customized the um the imaging for each guitar so this is the wide range one this is the sg it's, it's a slightly different look and everything so that's all cool and Obviously, something that will be crucial with any guitar MIDI library is making sure that there's legato uh, and it's satisfying the way it moves from one note to another and the articulations, and that's something that this instrument's really great at. I remember back in high school and things making, did you guys use Sibelius? And I remember writing guitar parts in Sibelius and it sounded so choppy. Um, yeah, oh man, throwback. Uh, but yeah, so looking here, we you can see you have some articulations, you have legato option, you can set the amount of vibrato, uh, and then you also have this mode here. So the mode dictates whether it's just playing singular notes, whether it's playing chords, uh, whether it's playing power chords. So at the moment, this one is on solo, you see it says there, you have chord recognition, so that's if you put a singular MIDI note in, it will uh, tell you a chord that would fit that, um, that will make entire chords of singular notes, and then you have power chords as well. And then you also have here a strum feature, so again, the, the choppiness of some MIDI guitar instruments you'll find, uh, where it will just be ja, 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 ja. the strum means that once you if you put in an, an entire chord all starting on the start of the bar line it will make it sound like a more natural strum and you can increase or decrease how much of a strum it sounds like so let's just listen also now to the wide range guitar and see the sounds of this particular one I'll just put it on solo. Okay, so that was a little taster of how it sounds. You can hear some really pleasant sounds. This was, you know, a finger plucked one is what I chose to use this particular guitar. For, but as you will see later on, that is just one of many uses for it. Um, you, as we start getting into the articulations, you would have heard that little harmonic there. And the way you can do articulations is with the velocity. So you set one for high velocity. You can pick from this drop down list here. And then you can set one for low velocity in the same way as well. And so anything above or below the velocity thresholds will become that articulation. Uh, you can also pick an articulation just for sustained notes as well. Uh, and something else that I found really lovely about it is the harmonics morphing and the feedback. 
So the feedback only does something, it seems to me, if you have the harmonics morphing on. Um, but, you know, this is what it would sound like with, with nothing. And then with the harmonics on, you start to get these, you know, lovely sustained resonances and things as well. And it just affects the sound quite a bit. It's really nice. Okay, so uh, we can have a look again now at the strumming a little bit more. So I put in this uh, strumming layer to sort of demonstrate that as well and have one that utilized that a bit more. So this is like another rhythm part. Um, and this one is modeled of the Stratocaster. Uh, so it's a different sound again as well. You can see that for the low velocity articulation, I have made it a X mute. So that's, you know, where you mute with the left hand. Uh, so let's just have a listen to that now. actually listen to those two together. Cool. Uh, and then as you get into, uh, you know, looking at having different sounds and everything, you have, of course, the effect. So if you go into that little spanner in the top left, you have these effects built into the instrument. Uh, you have the amps and everything that you'd use as well. What the sound props team have added for the complete guitar series is you have snapshots, which are like little presets for the effects you can use. Uh, so they are found in this drop down menu here but you have to load the snapshots into the relevant folder, but that's a really easy process. You know, you simply go into here, instrument options, uh, snapshot, and then you just go onto the, the show button and follow the instructions there. You just have to copy a couple of files across into the folder, really easy. And then you have all these presets. So this is the saturation one that you had on here, but as we start getting into where I have some distorted guitars, you can hear um, the distortion snapshots. So uh, let's look at the SG actually first. And uh, if we're just listening to it by itself, we'll centralize it. So you can see it's the distortion snapshot. And let's have a listen to the SG with a bit of gain cranked up. Really exciting stuff. Um, it, I mean, all these guitars sound really great. So um, that obviously helps when you're looking at MIDI instruments like this. So what is interesting as well about the way I've done the SG here, I'm trying to, again, with another layer, uh, display another feature of it. And this time I'm using the auto chord selection. I'm just doing it to detect power chords, but you can see on my MIDI clip here, I'm only using singular note, oh, if I just close this, you can see either by looking at the bottom or in the middle there, I'm only using singular notes, the root notes of every chord, um, but it's automatically completing the power chords for me with that power chord toggle. And you can do it for full uh, chords with the minor and major thirds as well and everything. And of course, if you want to change the tonality of a chord, you want it to be a G minor instead of a G major, you just put the B flat in there and it will learn and adjust. You know, it's pretty simple stuff. Uh, and the only other effect I haven't really talked about yet is the wah-wah that they have. They have this smart wah pedal. So at the moment it's off. Um, I don't actually use it in this track, funnily enough. I mean, wah-wah pedals aren't really part of my personal style when I play it. Maybe that played into it. But, you know, this is one of those ones that you can sync this up to your MIDI CC automation. Just right-click, learn MIDI CC. 
you can assign it to a MIDI controller, and you can manually do the wah-wah, but you can also choose one of these BPM sync options to have it just do the smart wah-wah and be automatic as well. And then the final layer of the rhythm section that we haven't really looked at yet is the uh, other distortion track, and that was the Les Paul. Um, obviously a legendary guitar, and they have it, of course, emulated within Volume 3, I believe it is. Um, and so I had that panned hard left opposite the SG, um, and together they make a pretty fearsome team. So uh, this is, I'll just play them together because I also have a Les Paul doing the lead section, uh, the lead guitar as well. Um, so this is what it sounds like together. So yeah, I mean, to me that goes pretty hard. Uh, of course, when you are double tracking stuff, you know, as you would know when you record it yourself with a, with a live guitar, you would have to do two different takes so it doesn't just sound like one big central guitar. And so with this one I added little variations. So not only do the two guitars sound different, because all of the guitar presets sound different, um, but I changed the parts slightly and also on the Les Paul one, I added a little bit of manual swing and, and moved it off the beat in a couple of places. You can see there on bar four, um, it's slightly afterwards and so that helped them sound a bit separate and distinct in the left and right channels um which is something you know, maybe you have to be mindful of with midi sometimes because it is like perfect timing so the only thing really left to do is to look at the final track i've made to show off the sound props guitar series um i'll give my final thoughts before i let the track play through um but yeah basically it's just great sounding guitar instruments um good customization, good options for articulation that help you chain together actually, you know, melodic and natural sounding phrases and everything. You'll hear a bit of them utilized in the lead guitar part as well, actually. Um, they have some options for bends and slides. I've used the slide up to kind of replicate a bend because it just works well um, for that as well. They have glissando, they even have tapping, so that can be used for fast tapping sections or hammer-ons and pull-offs, it takes away a bit of the attack of the picking sound. Another way I'll use this, apart from having to quickly do things, because, you know, I, I don't know about you, but sometimes I turn the camera on and then suddenly my fingers don't work, you know what I mean? Uh, well, not the camera, look, just hit the record button in Ableton, fingers don't work somehow. So um, it will save me time by being able to produce uh, guitar parts with MIDI that sound like the real deal and then um, also it will be a good practice tool for me you know it's a different way of writing not getting stuck in our pentatonic boxes or our habits when we actually play make me think outside the box for composition or to write a part in MIDI that I can't quite play and then learn to play and practice it so a really good composition and practice tool as well as a production one so uh, I'll just let the final track play through and uh, let me know your guys' thoughts. Uh, I've added a bit of drum and bass as well to fill out the song. Um, and I'll leave it at that. I've been Rain from Audio Plugin Deals. Have a good one. See you in the next one.